everyone. Welcome to Kazakhstan American Corner program. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Asel. I'm American Corner Kazakhstan Network Coordinator. So today we will talk about voices from access global citizenship in Kazakhstan. Also, I would like you to remind you that the session duration is 60 minutes. Stay tuned till the end and let's be active on the chat for the Q&A session. Just a moment. Uh, now I would like you to remind about some rules for stable connection. Please turn off your microphones when you're not using it. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat box. The meeting is being recorded and it will be available on, your, on our YouTube channel. And uh, let's, let's hand you over to John Silva. He's a regional English language officer here in Kazakhstan. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. And thank you for the very complete introduction. That was great. Um, as introduced, my name is John Silver. Uh, I'm an American diplomat. And as you probably heard during the beginning, I live here in Nur Sultan. Um, my introduction part will be very short. I'd like to thank you very much for, for being here today. Um, and I'd also like to thank August, our English language fellow, uh, for volunteering to do this great project uh, along with the other presenters. Um, it's not an easy thing to, uh, to give a presentation like this. So um, to August and, and the other presenters, thank you very much for, for sharing with us and, and being, being brave enough to do that. And I think if we're talking about global citizenship, this is a great example of what a global citizen can do. You can share your ideas and your thoughts and your successes. Um, we know that access in Kazakhstan is very active um, and globally active. I'm not sure if we'll be talking about this tonight, uh, but one of the access groups in Kazakhstan recently uh, had a, um, a, a connection with another group in India. Um, and last year, there was another group that, that worked with a group in Serbia. So uh, if you're interested in being a global citizen, if you're inspired by August and the other speakers, there are lots of things that you can do to reach out and, and work with other people around the world. I will stop there. Um, thanks again, August. Thanks American Corners uh, for hosting. We really appreciate this and your professionalism with setting, setting up meetings like this. Okay, so over to you, August. All right, <laughs> Th thank you, John. All right, um, and and definitely thank you, Asiel, uh, for uh, organizing everything. And you know, we definitely really always appreciate uh, American Corners, um, Kazakhstan, the whole network, uh, really for always supporting me and. Uh, others as well for all the great programming, whether it's online or offline. Uh, one of the things that I love so much about what I do is getting to provide these webinars, uh, and I just love them. And so yeah, tonight a little bit of a special program tonight. Let me go and share my screen, okay? We can go ahead and uh, kind of get started with what I have, okay. Okay. All right. I see everything coming through on your side. Noticing good. Great, cool. Thank you very much. So yeah, so tonight, as you guys heard, so uh, it's Voices from Access, Global Citizenship in Kazakhstan. And I'm gonna be joined by four other co-speakers tonight that are gonna present on kind of a, a little bit of a, a wider range of some topics, things from, you know, what is the Access program, things that they've done, uh, the impact of English language learning, not just to them, but to others around them, as well as community involvement. And as well as also we'll hear about some other aspects about being a cultural ambassador of Kazakhstan and things to share about Kazakhstan with potentially others outside of Kazakhstan. So have a lot of great information coming from a nice group of speakers tonight. And for those of you that uh, may not be familiar with me, it was mentioned that I am the English language fellow. I am here in Nur Sultan right now. Some of you may already know me through the other webinars that I do or some of the uh, 
access participants. Maybe I've worked with your groups before too, virtually. Um, I'm in Kazakhstan now. So if it was last academic year, you got the Florida me. <laughs> now, now I'm in, in the real here in Kazakhstan. Um, and so please feel free if you guys ever have some questions, maybe about something you see in the presentation or any other follow-up questions for any other information, you can email me at august.garnsey.gmail.com. A lot of the different types of opportunities or events that I uh, provide, whether it's online or offline, um, whether it's through American Corners Kazakhstan um, or other opportunities, you can always follow me on Instagram as well too. Um, and in addition to you know working with the uh, wonderful English Access program here in the different groups in Kazakhstan and with my work with American Corners Kazakhstan, I also uh, pro teach undergraduate and graduate students uh, at Ellen Gamilla Eurasian National University here in Nur Sultan, and as well as I engage other uh, groups all across Kazakhstan, whether it's um, English language teachers or other students or other adults or teens through various different types of events or programming. And it's always just a pleasure to do this. So um, just to kind of mention a few things here, um, I know maybe a lot of our participants may already actually be access program participants or former participants, now alumni. Um, and maybe some of us may not be participants, but we're kind of curious potentially about the access program. Um, so I mean, the access program in, in general, because you're going to see, I mean, you'll actually be able to visualize and see a lot of things that yeah. participants Ooh. are yeah. doing in the access program. And so that way, I'll let a lot of the other co-speakers be able to kind of show you some more details and things that they're doing. Um, I'm just going to just kind of mention in kind of a general global sense, but the English Access Program. It is a global program, okay, not just Kazakhstan. So again, we're focusing on Kazakhstan, but this is a global program that is supported by the U.S. Department of State. In general, the Access Programming provides a foundation of, you know, English language skills, you know, to talented teenagers, you know, from economic disadvantaged sectors through, you know, various after-school classes, other intensive programs and sessions, and really, I mean, the access program will uh, provides the participants, you know, with English language skills that can help them to be more successful, whether it's, you know, for um, employment opportunities, for jobs, for work, educational opportunities, or other opportunities to engage your own local community in various projects and work. You know, really, it's, it's intended to really, you know, increase participants' ability to participate successfully, you know, in social economic development, other countries, and, you know, in their own communities, you know, that they live in. And we have many different groups across Kazakhstan um, as of right now. Um, I think we have, uh, John, John didn't mention, but maybe I think we have like around maybe somewhere between maybe 16 to 20 groups potentially. Uh, I'm not sure the exact number right now, but we have quite a few groups all across Kazakhstan um, doing great things right now. But just from a global sense, um, the access program is not new, but it's had an impact on over 100,000 students in many, many countries uh, all around the world. So this has been a very impactful program and it's been very successful, as John mentioned earlier, in Kazakhstan. Now, my role and kind of my involvement with the ACCESS program, I've had some great times uh, with many different ACCESS groups. And I can say that I me mean, from all corners of Kazakhstan, from north to south, the east to west, uh, my work, I mean, from Atbasar Group to Semi to Taraz to Yurovsk, uh, I mean, I've, I've worked with many groups uh, and it's just really a pleasure. Now this last academic year, I worked in a virtual role as an English language fellow um, and so that was, but still it was an amazing experience, you know, to be able to 
you know, interact with all the participants. And I wasn't the only um, American or native English speaker that interacted with the access groups. You know, it's a great opportunity for the participants to be able to interact, you know, with people from outside of Kazakhstan. It's a great opportunity. I had a couple of some screenshots of some things I posted from access that I did in this past year, especially like from the summer, we had a great summer camp program uh, and it was terrific. I got to work with uh, groups from Almaty and Taraz and it was really something great. Um, but again, my experience this past year, virtually I worked with probably at least I think uh, maybe 10 different groups, maybe it was more than 10 different groups. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully being able to work more with the access groups again uh, in this upcoming year. Now, uh, what I kind of wanted to mention before I pass over to some of our other speakers is I just really want to just kind of introduce again this concept and this idea about being a cultural ambassador, you know, and what that is. I mean, me personally, in my role as an English language fellow, you know, I am a cultural ambassador, you know, representing the United States, you know, to the many wonderful people across Kazakhstan in all my interactions offline and online. You know, and being a cultural ambassador requires open-mindedness, you know, to new experiences, new relationships, new emotions, you know, and really it's to create a bridge, you know, between, you know, for instance, the US and Kazakhstan, okay? And really to create awareness because for instance, like in my situation, you know, how did I get started, you know, knowing about Kazakhstan? Well, you know, uh, quite a few years ago, there was an international student uh, at my university that was from Kazakhstan, from, from uh, southern Kazakhstan. And, you know, through some interactions with that international student in my um, program of study, uh, that person acted as a cultural ambassador and I am extremely thankful and grateful for the knowledge that she shared to me because Kazakhstan was something very unknown to me at that point. But through her acting as a cultural ambassador, she represented Kazakhstan to me and to many other Americans, my other peers in my program of study at the university. You know, so again, it creates awareness. It helps provide and promote a culture of respect between different groups of people, different societies in different countries. And this is really, really important. And definitely these are all things that are present within all the access groups in the access program, you know, all around the world. And this facilitation of collaboration, because like I mentioned that, you know, through the access program, participants do get to interact, you know, and work with other people from outside of Kazakhstan, you know, such as like myself, you know, like an English language fellow and other, you know, Americans as well. But, you know, one of the things about access, and you're going to learn from the other speakers as they share their experience, that we're not just talking about, you know, globally, but also locally, being able to facilitate, you know, project work and other kind of local community you know, events and initiatives and work and awareness, you know, so it's a real important thing, you know, being a cultural ambassador because, you know, Kazakhstan, you know, it's a beautiful country and it's an amazing country that I love so much. But, you know, for a lot of people outside of Kazakhstan, it's still kind of an unknown country. And every single one of you that speaks and learns English you have a very important role to be able to share your knowledge of Kazakhstan with other English speakers all around the world, okay? So again, so that's kind of, you know, the idea. And, and you're going to get to see examples and experiences from access participants and, you know, what cult, being a cultural ambassador, you know, you can see what they've done themselves, okay? All right. And again, for uh, other additional information too, whether it's for the access program or for other potential opportunities, um, whether it's through exchanges or just collaboration or work, okay? There are lots of opportunities out there, you know, through the U.S. Department of State or the U.S. Embassy. Um, I will put the links into the chat and please do uh, follow the Regional English Language Office for Central Asia, their Facebook account for various different types of opportunities and other information as well. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over now to our first invited guest speaker. Okay, so now our speakers come from different regions across Kazakhstan. Some of them are current participants in the Access program. Some are part of our great alumni network. Okay, representing uh, definitely just the, you know, the, just the amount of, you know, participants in Kazakhstan is a large number and it's, it's a beautiful thing and it's great. So I'm going to go and pass it over to uh, Janarke. So it's going to be all yours, Janarke. So, all right. Moment. Could you see my presentation, guys? Yeah, we yes. see it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay. Mm, hi, everyone. Thank you for. Uh, having me here today. It's a great honor to, to be with you. So uh, today I'm going to cover the uh, what is access and hello guys from Cosgroup Access. Um, so as we all know, access is the key to success and we're here to make progress. It's, it's a little part of our anthem, if you remember. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Jenner Um, I'm an alumni of Access Microsoft Power to Program in uh, 2017 to 2019. I'm currently studying at the University of uh, Toronto Senal. Uh, my major is interpreter. Uh, also last year, uh, I was selected as a finalist of Boston Summer Camp. And now I'm an alumni of Youth Soccer and English Language Virtual Sports Program. And also, uh, I've been volunteering um, since 2017 uh, and being a trainer in uh, NGOs, uh, I mean, non-governmental organizations, also governmental organizations, um, and also international um, network, uh, which is called YPIR. Um, so, Next, uh, what is access? Access, it's just, just we know that um, they will learn English, right? Yeah, we learn English more than 360 hours. Um, we just give our time to learn English. However, uh, it's not only just about learning English, right? It's about uh, meeting with ambassadors, um, uh, having an opportunity to meet with them and also um, meeting with people who came here by exchange programs, I mean, foreign students, um, exchange programs as Fulbright, CC, and et cetera. Uh, also here by, uh, during this uh, program, you can volunteer in NGOs, also international organizations. And um, also uh, here uh, they provide, uh, I mean, the, Access program provides uh, many projects um, which can help you um, enlarge your background, right? Uh, and also here in Access program, you know, I didn't find any new friends. I could find, because instead of this, I could find sisters, brothers, and teachers, as we call them, mother and father. And also here in Access program, I found myself, real myself. So, uh, yeah, power of English is so, I don't know, English is so powerful. And everyone is, uh, who is sitting here knows that um, learning English is not just a piece of cake. And you have to know why you are learning English, right? And uh, first of all, before starting, uh, before learning English or uh, improving it, uh, you should have a right intention, as my teacher said. So uh, now, guys, uh, I'm going to share many with you many pictures um, and tell about Casabot Access use. Uh, and American holidays uh, that we um, celebrate also exchange programs as Flex, Boston Semicon, etc. And also volunteering works and social projects. 
Um, in the history of access, because of access, yes, actually two people were uh, flex finalists here, Ola Borobayev and Esmai Borobayev. Um, they were selected and invited to study one academic year at American High School. Uh, this program gave them um, a widen and knowledge and this program helped them to uh, increase um, their leadership capacity. And also last year, I was a finalist of uh, Boston Summer Boston Camp. However, um, during the coronavirus, I mean, pandemic, I couldn't go to America. However, I'm looking forward to having many opportunities um, by US government. And I'm really thankful for those opportunities. Uh, so, also volunteering, I guess uh, the people who are sitting here, uh, I don't know, 50 persons of uh, them, I guess they are volunteer. Um, Cosworth volunteers actually worked on many sites, uh, eco site, for instance. Uh, we organized eco marsh um, to help our, to keep our environment safe and clean, right? And also we helped for veterans. Um, actually, uh, while studying at Access Program, um, many students asked us, uh, why should I be a volunteer, right? So there, there are reasons. Please <laughs> uh, take a note, uh, reasons to volunteer or to becoming a volunteer, right? Here, um, while volunteering, um, you're gonna learn new skills. You're gonna practice uh, the skills you have. You're gonna build your confidence. You're gonna discover new hobbies and interests. A uh, little bit later, I'm gonna tell about uh, my new hobby, uh, which I discovered during this access program. And also you're gonna meet uh, with many people. And then one of the essential or good point of the being volunteer, it, it includes um, volunteering experience. You can include this volunteering experience on your CV. Uh, for instance, if you're um, going to apply for foreign universities uh, in the USA or other countries, uh, they actually, uh, the essential um, skill is, um, I guess, even if you have a hard, IQ or EQ. However, you do, if you don't have a volunteering experience, I don't know. That's why please become a volunteer. And also my uh, teacher, Sardor Isman, once said, I don't know, is there any uh, phrase in English, uh, like clean your heart? Uh, he always tells, the told and tells and will tell us that we should keep our heart clean. And that's what uh, we learned during access program um, while learning English as well. So about journalism, it's my new hobby while this, um, which I discovered while studying an access program. Uh, here you can see that, um, uh, you know, we haven't learned, learned English just by grammar or just by speaking or uh, in improving our uh, reading or, uh, reading comprehension, et cetera. Um, we've done many activities to learn English. And through journalism, we could improve our English because uh, in 2019, um, we've opened our own uh, YouTube channel, which is called Casbord News. And there uh, we started sharing uh, the news about our uh, village, Casbord, uh, in English. Um, yeah. Here in the first picture, you can see uh, it's me. And uh, she's Sandra Lee. Uh, she's an English language fellow as always here. And uh, next to her, is, she is Amanda, if I'm not mistaken. She is a Fulbright English teaching assistant. And I'm taking, uh, it's my first time when I was taking an interview and from foreign people, you know. Uh, that was a good experience for me. And here uh, in the second picture, you can see our handmade microphone. Uh, when I see this picture, uh, I just wanna laugh 
at the same time i just wanna cry not because that we we, we didn't have a, a real specific professional microphone uh because it's it was all about supporting supporting and supporting uh so next uh about american holidays during access program we could open many uh we we could celebrate uh uh, many American holidays. In the first picture, you can see that uh, we were uh, in uh, summer camp, access summer camp every year. Uh, this program provides you uh, a summer camp. Uh, we were near the mountain and um, uh, it was the 1st of July. Uh, as we all know, it's Independence Day of America, right? Uh, and in the second picture, uh, you can see uh, we are here celebrating the Thanksgiving Day uh, and some activities, also spilling bee. Um, we did many <laughs> works. So, uh, and also about uh, English. Uh, as I've told, um, we haven't learned English just by grammar, right? Uh, our teachers, uh, our coordinators of this program try to uh, teach us uh, in different ways. One of the uh, greatest way uh, from my point of view, it was a project-based learning. Um, by project-based learning, uh, we, could, we could write, create, make many eco projects um, and social projects even by social projects um, we were teaching uh, rural rural use uh, for english for free um, and helping them uh, to increase their english uh, math and other subjects uh, and also trainings we've conducted and business projects. Um, now guys, I'd like you to listen to me more carefully because I wanna share with you the really cool tool on how to setting up your goals uh, or dreams about learning English. Uh, maybe if you, were, if you know English fluently, Maybe you've passed IELTS, you've passed TOEFL, SAT, etc. However, if you have a higher dream, higher goal, now, guys, we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna introduce you uh, with the smart method. Then, uh, on the chat room, you can write down your um, own dream or goal um, about learning English. Okay, it might be uh, related to improving your English or. Uh, passing a certain test as IELTS, TOEFL, and SAT. So uh, what is SMART? Um, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So uh, your, your goal should be SMART to reach it. Uh, about specific um, example, for instance, become fluent in English. Uh, it's a poor goal to better goal examples, to be able to talk to someone on a specific subject as math, biology, etc., uh, and also to, to have a vocabulary of 2,000 words. And that's a um, goal um, that you can reach. If you just say like, I wanna um, speak English fluently, it's not a goal. Um, to have a uh, reachable goal, you have to achieve a goal, you have to have this kind of, um, Goal settlements. Second, measurable. Yeah. Uh, for instance, for improve your vocabulary. How to improve? How many words? Yeah. Uh, better goals. You have, uh, I will learn five new words a day, or I will spend 20 minutes a day learning new words. Next, attainable. Um, uh, for instance, you have to set realistic goals that challenge you, but they should be achievable, as I said. Uh, for instance, uh, I learn 100 new words a day. Uh, day by day, uh, learning such kind of wide range of words, you're going to lose your desire. 
You can just set up goal as I will learn 10 new words a day, uh, or I will learn one grammar point this week, and etc. And relevant and time bound, uh, for instance, I want to get B1 level in Italian, it's a poor goal, or I will learn 100 new uh, words, it's also poor. Uh, better goals, um, I want to B1 or B2 level in English in six months time, or I will learn 100 new words this month and etc. So guys, uh, that's all about Smart Girl. Um, I guess you've got it. Uh, you can just unmute your um, word. Yeah, you can just okay could you please uh write down your goals by following this smart method on chat room or if you can speak please feel free to speak jenica yeah it's a great idea so participants um feel free to put into the chat your smart goal, your goal that you have for learning English. I'm sure a lot of you may have some goals for learning English. Um, and yeah, go ahead and feel free to share those in the chat right now. Guys, feel free to share. Okay, my goal is to improve my English to pass IELTS test and start to study abroad. Cool. I guess you have to add them um, points about time bound. Yeah. Cool. I, I Guys, see. Some... your dreams come true. Hmm? I, want to I see. Yeah, some some participants have some very kind of specific things that they would like, and these are really nice goals to have in communication, yeah. uh, whether it's for personal travel or for academic or professional purposes or reasons, or maybe certain types of things, for instance, as in being able to participate in debates. That's terrific. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks, participants. Um, so thank you guys for sharing with your goals. I'm going to uh, read a little bit later because uh, time is so um, at the end of my presentation, I'd like to say that uh, once my teacher, Sir Man, told me that uh, this code, and from that day, I've started uh, to crawling, I, I can say. So guys, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free, feel free to ask on chat room or uh, send any questions to my email. Thank you. All right. Th thank you, Janoke, for that really informative presentation about, you know, about the access program and, you know, the amount of, you know, all the different types of events and things that you did and for helping to uh, provide us with some inspiration and uh, for us to focus on setting some smart goals. Terrific. Maybe you can also put your email as well into uh, the chat then if anybody would like to follow up if they had any other questions for you. We're going to go ahead and uh, pass it on to our next uh, invited speaker. Um, and our next invited speaker, uh, Oldenai, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Good, good Hello, everyone. All yours. All right. So there I have a little problem with my presentation. I don't know what, but can I just speak, be your speaker and tell you about my story? Uh, sh sure. Uh, unless, I mean, if you'd want uh, one of us to, to share uh, for you. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's fine if, if you just want to speak and yeah, maybe tell us about it. I mean, 
that's okay. Mm -hmm. So hello everyone, students from Axis. My name is Odanai. I am an Axis student, one year. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm no, I work in the company studying as a marketing manager. So I also if say a little bit about me, I'm speaker of the three day marathon English and president of our school. So I am really active girl. So I love um, a lot of things to do and also voluntary. So the firstly, I want to really, uh, I'm really thankful for this program, British Council of American Corners, for this opportunity to learn English. Year ago, I couldn't speak in English. I just uh, don't understand any uh, speeches of our per people and native speakers I really don't understand but now I can understand you easily and speak to in English easily also maybe I have a little bit mistakes but I think it's good that I don't speak in English so the Mr. Agus he is the best teacher because our summer cup was so good I was waiting a lot of things that summer cup we will uh, meet with as offline, not online, but everything was so good. So today, uh, I wanna just um, say you a little bit the place of Kazakhstan. What should you visit there? So may I start? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanna introduce you quality sightseeing in Kazakhstan. As you might know, Kazakhstan is ninth the biggest country in the world. And it goes without saying that there are a lot of great, uh, how to say, great deal to see and enjoy. So our nature is very deserved and different, really. And one place is our country, you could feel yourself like you are in the Switzerland and another place you are in Canada, you know? Why? If you wonder why that, it's because of mountains and lakes. Because if you want, if you are in Almaty, you will feel that you are in the Switzerland. If you are in the uh, north part of Kazakhstan, you will feel you are in the Canada because of lakes. And the welcoming nature of the people that live here and one interesting fact and one interesting thing that personally I want to see and I want to um, know about them that in the city north of Kazakhstan, Kukshidao, we have four water bodies lakes. Or, so, so they are really different, four types of rivers and lakes. And also we have natural parks where the wilderness and the preserved. So, you should be there because they are so interesting. And one interesting part is the canyon. I had a presentation that was forest, but I can't share now. So uh, with canyon. In the world, we have two canyons. The first is the north part of US, and second one is in Kazakhstan. You should be there. Personally, I was um, I was here and I can tell they are so beautiful place. And so it's about the greatest place where you need to visit and see. So feel free to ask any questions to me about the program or I don't know about Kazakhstan. I can answer. I would love to answer you. Okay. So, so, so uh, definitely in participants, you can always at any time put your questions into the chat. You know, so Olden I is, is basically what she's doing, it's a very important part about being a cultural ambassador um, and being multilingual, you know, as, as many people in Kazakhstan are, and the importance of being able to improve. I mean, she had um, short-term goals that she's achieved quite, you know, which is remarkable, you know, as she told us that, you know, her learning English, it's, it's, been a very transformative uh, experience for her and being able to share about the great places in Kazakhstan with people from other countries such as you know myself 
And during my time with the Axis Group, uh, organized group in Almaty, yeah. they took me on a virtual tour of Kazakhstan and I learned so much from them. And it's a very important job. And again, the power of English language and being able to help be able to create awareness about Kazakhstan to others, you know, that may not know about Kazakhstan or know very little about Kazakhstan. And it's very important for each and every one of you, you know, being these cultural ambassadors of Kazakhstan. If anybody has any questions, please, you know, feel free to uh, put them into uh, the chat for any of our participants. Yeah. Um, Oldenai, was there any other points that you wanted to uh, share? The points uh, that I want to uh, talk about the program that where was, uh, I have a question for the students. Can I ask? So what was for you difficult to learn English in this program and what was, uh, how to say, easily for you? For example, uh, for me, uh, personally was to learn uh, phrases or words to remember them. But I practice a lot and I now I can say that it isn't a problem anymore. So I wanted to know that as a student's problem or a very special. Okay, good, good question. So participants, feel free to put into the chat, maybe what were some of your potential difficulties or obstacles that you faced, you know, with learning English? And you can maybe start by sharing some of the obstacles that you faced, some of the difficulties or uh, challenges, you know, that you faced. Can I? Sure. Yeah. Uh, go. 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 Go ahead. We. I heard. I heard a voice out there. <laughs> go ahead. You can uh, provide. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Claude Achniet. I'm from Kasgord, and uh, I'm also a student of Access Micro uh, Scholarship. And uh, during the learning English. Uh, the most challenging was uh, writing a C for me because I had lots of uh, grammatic uh, mistakes and uh, uh, was so easily uh, speaking maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure, but maybe speaking and some <laughs> games. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, it sounds, sounds like you're, 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 you're doing great, Aknet. Uh, definitely, it's good, good to hear from you uh, again. I, I uh, got the chance to have lessons uh, with Aknet and her uh, group at Kesegert's uh, Access Group. So uh, definitely nice to hear from you. And I saw some others put it into the chat as well, some of the obstacles uh, that, that they face as well in English language learning. But again, you know, go, going back to having those smart goals, as Jana K mentioned, again, we should all have our smart goals for English, uh, for um, learning English language, again, because it's not going to be infinite. A lot of you say, I want to sound like a native speaker, but you should have more uh, kind of specific goals, things that are measurable, things that you can obtain within a specific period of time that are reasonable, uh, that can really help you in having conversation with people outside of Kazakhstan to be able to share about the great things of your country. So, um, and I think that maybe we're gonna go ahead and potentially uh, move forward. Aldenay, did you have some other points that you wanted to share with us? I think that's all. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much again thank for you. providing some of those great points of Kazakhstan. Those are definitely great spots that, you know, that you'd want to share with others outside of Kazakhstan the many geographic beauties and wonders in the country. All right, so next up, uh, we're going to have uh, Aisha Pan. She is going to be our next speaker. So it's all yours. Thank you very much. So good day to everyone. 
So uh, really, I didn't expect that more than 100 people will join to our meeting. That's why I'm quite nervous. Uh, because to say frankly, it was about a year that I didn't present something in a big audition. That's why I'm not quite, I'm really nervous. That's why big thanks to August and American Corner in Sultan to have this kind of big chance. Okay, let's start. Let me introduce myself. My name is Aishul Pan and I'm 20 years old. And one interesting fact about me, so I have changed three <laughs> universities University till today I'm third course student so it means that uh, I'm a girl who really uh, who really loves adventure who who is really open to new things okay in this presentation oh, can you hear me yes, yes yeah we can okay, hear you okay thank you so uh, next page please so in my presentation, I divided my presentation into three types. It's like a before access program, uh, at the time of access program, and after the access program. Okay, before access program, I was eighth grade, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, to say frankly, my goal was to be a doctor because my parents wanted me to become a doctor and to get married to the rich people and live happily. Yes, it, to, to say frankly, it was my uh, goal, life goal. So, uh, and uh, because I live in village and in a village, the words like a career was something unreal. That's why um, I don't know about others, but my life goal was this kind of. So, okay. Also my life, in my life, I had uh, two things, uh, school and home, school, home, school, home. That's why I wanted something new and I stopped in English language. And my first teacher was teacher Sador. I'm really i really love this person because uh, it's not just that he's not just a teacher he's a person who changed many of the many of students life so okay so here um, i will uh, say some examples of my life uh, how this access program affected uh, in my life and then i become an access student in the first day uh, when our teacher said us that um, students, you will go to America and you will study in America. I, I came to home and I said, stupid, it's not unreal. I had this kind of feelings because going to America, speaking English frequently, it was something unreal for us. Uh, then I become an access program and access program had uh, a lot of influence uh, on me. So uh, you know why do I love this program? Because the uniqueness of this program is not just learning English language. So why I love this program? Because here the main um, important thing it's a culture exchange. Because you can learn English in everywhere. You can learn it by yourself. You can learn in any education center. But the uniqueness of this program it's a cultural. Uh, it was a cultural exchange. And in our uh, uh, in our uh, lessons, we celebrated American um, holidays. In that time, I felt that I was a part of this nation. Uh, I really love this language. Uh, it doesn't matter if uh, I speak with mistake or without. The most important, I feel myself free when I speak this language. Okay, uh, next page. Um, so. Uh, holidays. Uh, in during the access program, we have celebrated holidays, and uh, you know, um, the when we celebrated in our uh, village, we had some. We we had we faced it with obstacles because uh, our people who lived in village they didn't understand this because uh, the, the holidays like uh, Halloween and uh, Hanukkah or Thanksgiving Day, they didn't like this. Because, and I had some friends who hated me that I <laughs> uh, celebrated this holiday. Uh, then uh, in here, my teacher, Sardor, uh, he gave good answer. And this answer, I took like a quote of my life. And he said, it doesn't matter if, if we want that our Kazakhstan was a developed country, we should uh, respect other country. Uh, we should respect their culture, their tradition, their language. In that case, we can develop our country. Because uh, my friend said to me that, why are you uh, developing English instead of Kazakh? Why are you ce celebrating American holidays? In that time, the most important, we should respect other nation. In that case, we can have a respect. 
So the next page, okay, thank you. In this picture, you can see that we celebrated uh, some holidays. So the next is volunteering. Uh, so before becoming volunteer, to say frankly, I had stupid question. Why should I work and uh, get nothing in return? Um, but uh, I was wrong because instead of you get a little thing, and when you see the happiness in a person, when you help, uh, help it, you forgot your um, obstacles, you, are, uh, you forget everything because you are the reason of the happiness, someone's happiness. And also, my volunteer works helped me in my universe time, in my not just university, in my personal life. Uh, uh, after uh, finishing the access program with Mission Erke, we have organized spelling bee in our university. And thanks to our English language, we have participated in many uh, big uh, conferences like a Kaza Energy Forum, like a Digital Bridge. Uh, it's, uh, it was um, this. Uh, we uh, participated in these programs thanks to our English, thanks to our love to English language. So thank you. Next. <clears throat> Next page, Ms. Shunerke. Mm -hmm. Okay, about book. Uh, also, uh, in the closing ceremony, our closing access ceremony, we wrote book and our book's name, uh, our book's name is Arwan Gabrafadam. In English, it means one step to dream. Uh, in here, it was like our memory book. In here, we wrote uh, our war memories about access program when we celebrated um, uh, holidays, uh, what did we feel and what kind of obstacles did we had and how did we face with that and uh, actually uh, to say uh, in short I want to say that access program it was like a um, shine in a dark place and shine in a dark place because this uh, program helped me to become a real actual fun how Janerke said you find your real uh, real you and I want to finish my uh, presentation with my own poem I have recited this poem to the uh, has, got, has got talent and I recite poem about access program so let me finish access is not just word access is very big world the world president is our teacher we are his lovely volunteer we make new friends thanks to access. We will develop, we will progress. And I'm never tired to say access is opportunity, access is success. Thank you. If you have a question, you can ask. I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> thank you, Ashokan. Yeah, yeah th thank you very much, Ashokan, for uh, that words. I mean, and that that poem, I mean, that's just, that that's really incredible. Really, thank you so much for sharing that with all of our participants uh, as you mentioned and and uh it's it's okay to be uh nervous and yeah we have you know <laughs> over a hundred uh participants tonight um and it's really great to see the support from you know current participants of the access program or uh previous participants now part of our uh, alumni network it's really nice to see uh, everyone here and to see the comments in the chat so you know thank you to everyone we have uh, one more speaker uh, with us here tonight that's also going to present uh, more information as well here uh, Balnor hello everyone hey. hey hello Balnor so it's going to be all yours here uh, so yes yeah, so uh, go ahead and you can uh, see and share your screen uh, okay. Can I have loud to uh, share my screen? Sure. Let's let's see here. Um, um, shows I can't make you a host. I think are are you a host already? Let me see. No, I can't. Let's see here. Okay. Oops. One moment here. Um, Asiel? Yes. Yeah, let's see. Um, can 
I think that maybe do we reach our limit? I think of co host potentially because I'm not seeing the option anymore. I did that. Uh, okay, now I can do it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, one minute, please. <clears throat> Okay. Um, hello, everybody, and my name is Bonur. Uh, I'm from Access Team SME. And uh, uh, how you know, uh, yesterday we uh, uh, celebrated the first President Day. Uh, and uh, on the 16th of December, our country will celebrate uh, an important date. Uh, it will be 30 years uh, for Kazakhstan's independence. Uh, due to my interest uh, in this celebration, I want to pay attention for results uh, that Kazakhstan has uh, achieved uh, so far. Um, on December 16, uh, 1991, Kirsten became an autonomous country. Uh, our state uh, faced with new challenges. Firstly, we had to show the world uh, leaders the potential uh, and competitiveness of uh, Kazakhstan. The Sultan Azarbayev many times gave us his opinion about foreign policy. Uh, foreign policy is one of the most important tools uh, for uh, straightening the country's competitiveness. By virtue of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev's decision, Kirsten started to build uh, friendly relationships with other countries. I think that peace loving policy of Kazakhstan is best suited um, to hospitable, uh, best suited to hospitable sovereignty of the people. Uh, strategy of formation uh, and development uh, of Kazakhstan as a sovereign state was presented to the public in 1992. It became a guide uh, to the formation of successful original policy in cooperation with countries all around the world. To date, we can uh, observe the achievements of Kazakhstan in this area. Um, for example, the closure of nuclear test site had a positive impact not only on the ecology of the country, but also in foreign policy. The Republic became a leader in the anti-nuclear movement, Nevada Sin Palatins, in which the actions and decisions of the first president of the country were of great importance and uh, the initiative of uh, our state, uh, uh, the initiative of uh, our state uh, influenced, influenced uh, the adoption by the uh, United National General Assembly uh, of the Universal uh, Declaration uh, of Building a World Free of uh, Nuclear Weapons. In addition, the renunciation of nuclear weapons showed the world the goodwill and openness of Kazakhstan's diplomacy. Um, the OSCE summit of 2010 also brought great uh, progress of Kazakhstan, which became a key moment uh, in straightening uh, the authority of a country and the president. Mr. Sultan Zerbayev managed to achieve these goals uh, thanks to proposals uh, that improved our country uh, uh, and uh, supplemented the format uh, of organization's work. Uh, at the moment, our country is a member of many international organizations. Uh, diplomatic relations 
uh, diplomatic relations with uh, 180 states uh, have also been established. Uh, I can mention that uh, frame policy of our country uh, give all Kazakhstan's people opportunity to communicate and cooperate with people all around the world. Good example for that is success program. Uh, thanks to friendly relationships between uh, the USA and Kazakhstan, you can develop uh, knowledge, uh, have new experience, and uh, improve ourselves. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. All right. Well, well thank you, uh, Balnor, for that information. And again, that is just to kind of show that again, about being a cultural ambassador, you know, through the use of English language to others outside of Kazakhstan, because old and I mentioned about some of the great, you know, ge geographic beauties and things in the, in Kazakhstan, as well as, as Balnor's mentioned about, you know, global collaboration and about contributions globally that Kazakhstan has made as well. And these are all important things for you as, you know, basically ambassadors of Kazakhstan to others around the world, other English speakers to be able to share about all the great things about Kazakhstan, because it truly is, as I've learned in my time and my experience in Kazakhstan, a truly amazing country full of incredible people, contributions and culture. Um, and that's just a great thing. And, you know, and the access program uh, helps as well to support English language learning and all of the participants uh, in becoming uh, active in their communities and to engage each other. And it's really great to see uh, everything tonight being presented. Um, and again, I just want to say a great big thank you again to, you know, our speakers. Again, thank you. Uh, Aishopan, Janer K, Oldenai, Balnur. It's not easy to speak to a large group. I, I really can't emphasize that enough, but you guys did fantastic. And all of your peers and all our participants uh, really respect and appreciate all your contributions tonight for a webinar. And uh, John Silver, uh, our regional English language officer for Central Asia. Thank you, John, for being here. Did you have some uh, words, maybe anything else that you'd like to uh, say here before we take a group photo? Sure, August, thank you so much uh, for this initiative and your co-presenters did an absolutely amazing job. It was so great uh, to hear about their experiences and also to see such excellent participation. We had over a hundred people in the room. Um, thanks again to American Corners, um, colleagues for for hosting uh great that's a that's a great big help to us um so yeah with that i will sign off and i'll uh i'll comb my hair for our for our group picture. <laughs> for the group photo for all of you all of you that have been to my webinars before you know that uh i like to have group photos like that because we're all one big happy family here uh so let's go ahead and turn on your cameras if you got your you know your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, you got your cat, your dog on your lap, it's okay. Go ahead, turn on your cameras. We're all family here. And so let's go ahead and we can, uh, well, I think we need to take a, a few screenshots here because we got such a big group of us. Uh, Asil is gonna take care of the photos for all of us, but go ahead everybody. And uh, as John said, I need to fix my hair a little bit too, right? It's kind of yeah, you know, off to the side here a little bit. There we go. So guys, <laughs> fix it. All right. Maybe is John, where's Mike at? He's in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Guys. He won't make no, this pick. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. All right. So guys, are you guys all ready? Let's go ahead and maybe we can go ahead for English language learning. Let's maybe give a thumbs up or a heart for your love for learning English and for learning languages and for embracing cultural differences and for doing what you guys do as cultural ambassadors. Let's go and let's give a thumbs up to that and let's go ahead and take some pictures. Okay, we ready? 
One, two, three. And I wanted just to add that we usually are not surprised when, uh, for example, students or young people from big cities speak English perfectly. But I was proud for uh, those graduates from Kazakut, from a small rural area, that they spoke perfect English. And of course, this is a gratitude to access program, which gives opportunity not only for big cities, but for a distance located far distant located uh, rural areas as well for villages and for small for small cities and so i am proud of you sardor your i mean your students and your uh, like a uh, best teacher of course thank you and thank you to rilo and uh, thank you august i'm not the first time when i was uh, i am participating in your webinar and seminar the meetings Thank you so much. Th th thank you, Sam School. Uh, pre appreciate the words. Uh, still, did we get those pictures in? Yeah, we did, but we can do a few more. We, 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 if we got them, I, I, think, I think we're good then. Or do you need one more? One more, please. All right, we'll, we'll, <laughs> do, we'll do one more here. Okay, guys. Okay. All right. Okay, thumbs up. One, two, three. Please smile. Good. At once. Again, one, two, three. Okay, have everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you again, everyone, for your participation tonight. It's great to see everyone. Stay tuned for more upcoming potential webinars and programming that I do through American Corners Kazakhstan. Again, you can follow me uh, as well as American Corner Nurse Sultan to hear more about these terrific opportunities and as well as the Regional English Language Office, Central Asia, and their Facebook page. Check us out, guys. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Be well. Enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. Take care. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. 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 Stay safe. Bye. Hello, oh, oh, okay.